Remember way back in 2010 when then First Lady Michelle Obama created the Let's Move campaign? Maybe? You might not remember the campaign, but you undoubtedly know the theme song. Oh yes, there was a theme song. Move Your Body, performed by none other than Queen Bee herself. See, now you remember it. Well, Let's Move was intended to counter childhood obesity by encouraging kids to be more active and eat healthier. Ask your little sister, she definitely remembers this. But now, more than a decade later, have collective views on obesity changed? I sat down with Dr. Rena Bose from the Cleveland Clinic to discern truth from fiction and maybe have a little dance party too. I'm Tori and welcome to the TMI Show. Today, we're joined by Dr. Bose to discuss some frequently asked questions about obesity and try to get to the bottom of this complicated topic. So hi, my name is uh, Dr. Bose. I'm one of the obesity docs here at the endocrine department at the Cleveland Clinic. How do you define obesity? So that's a great question. So obesity probably has multiple definitions if you look it up, but it is basically a chronic and a relapsing disease that we can struggle with all our lives. And there are multiple reasons, you know, it could be genetic, it could be an environmental influence, all of which can impact obesity. So in clinical terms, we look at something called a BMI, body mass index. So typically when patients are seeing their providers, you know, you look at the BMI, and that is typically greater than or equal to 30, 30. Is BMI a useful tool in determining whether someone has obesity? So yeah, so it is a great practical tool. You know, most of us in our offices have BMI that gets calculated as soon as the patients walk through the door and we have the height, the gender, the age, and you kind of have an idea where they need to be. It can help define the class of obesity. So class one, class two, or class three, which is severe obesity, but it's not a perfect index to measure obesity. So there are patients who have almost a normal BMI, but might be suffering with a lot of visceral adiposity, meaning a lot of extra fat. So the BMI doesn't differentiate between your muscle and your fat. So sometimes BMI may not be the best option. That's when you may need to consider something called a body composition. How is obesity related to other health conditions, physical and mental? So, you know, obesity is a chronic health disease. Most of them are struggling with a lot of stigma on the weight. So they can walk into your office and come in because of blood pressure creeping up or now they are becoming pre-diabetic or diabetic or severe migraines which could be coming from sleep apnea that can also sneak in with weight. So obesity presents with a lot of chronic health diseases. It can present with joint pain, it can present with mental health problems, you know, like depression, anxiety. Now, how does lifestyle compare to genetics when it comes to the cause of obesity? Is one weighted more heavily than another? So that's another great question. The more and more we look into obesity as a chronic disease, we find that genetics and lifestyle both influence our, our weight. Obviously, genetics play a much bigger role, but the environmental influences, the lifestyle choices can impact the genetic influence. And also now, with all the newer medications that have come out, we can target the obesity. At the clinic here, we are focusing not just on medications, but a comprehensive weight loss approach. So helping them with their diet, with their exercise, with their sleep, managing their stress better, because all of that will impact their weight. Now, I know certain racial and ethnic groups are disproportionately affected by obesity. Which groups are most affected? And do we know why? Great question. So I was looking at the CDC website a few days ago, and this is what I found. So it looks like the non-Hispanic black adults have about 49.9%, so almost 50% chance of having higher prevalence of obesity. This is followed by the Hispanic adults that have 45.6% prevalence of obesity. And then we have the non-Hispanic whites, the percentage is 41.4%. And then the non-Hispanic Asian adults, 16.1%. And if you look at it deeper, you know, much of it is guided by their demographics. So if you come from a low socioeconomic uh, you know, background, Access to healthy food is not always possible. Access to good health care, ability to afford health insurance is not possible. So there could be lots of different reasons where these patients unfortunately are struggling. Is the old Let's Move campaign's advice to move more and eat healthy food the best way to address obesity? How do doctors find the right treatment approach for each individual person? 
So I think the let's move campaign is fantastic. So move more and try to adopt healthier food is ideal. But again, it has to be a comprehensive approach. Many patients, like I've mentioned before, don't have access to good health care. They want to move more, but they're limited physically. Maybe the joint pain, the hip pain, the knee pain is a big barrier. So number one, I think you want to either talk to your primary care physician to see if they're comfortable treating obesity. If not, get a referral to see an obesity specialist. Like I said, at the clinic, we have a great staff here, comprehensive approach. One size does not fit all. So most patients benefit greatly with the medications for obesity because they will see meaningful weight loss in conjunction with movement, meaning exercise. So we have a team of exercise physiologists that can give the patient a more structured routine, taking into account maybe limitations. We have dietitians who will work with the patients on adopting healthier lifestyle choices. We have psychologists who can focus on, say, eating disorders like binge eating, overeating, and so on, and work on certain treatment modalities to be able to control those eating disorders. What are some new options for addressing obesity? So that's a great question. As we know, every day on TV or you open the newspaper, you know, there's lots of information out there for the new drugs that have come out. Medications have made a big difference in patients as far as them reaching their goals for weight. They are altering your gut and brain pathways. So patients feel like they are feeling more comfortable. They're feeling more sated. You know, they have a sense of fullness now after they eat. And very importantly, the insulin resistance in many of these patients that has improved. So the new medications have made a big difference in meaningful weight loss for our patients. How can people with obesity access the medications they need for treatment? Well, again, you know, you want to remind them that this is not a choice. They didn't wake up one day and make a lifestyle choice of being unhealthy as far as their weight. It is a chronic disease, chronic relapsing disease. So it gets better, comes back. So as long as patients are able to comprehend that statement, they can make the right decision for themselves. Is it possible for a person to have obesity and be healthy? So yeah, so there are patients who are what we call metabolically healthy, meaning, you know, the BMI, you know, that's the number we were talking about that doesn't look ideal, but yet their blood pressure is okay, you know, lipid panel is fine, the sugars might be acceptable. But there's been recent data now that shows that these patients in the long term will suffer from something called metabolic dysregulation. So, you know, hormonal imbalances and so on and slightly higher risk of cardiovascular disease. So again, you know, don't feel afraid to reach out for help. There's lots of great options now for weight loss. So talk to your physician. Anything else you want to add? Well, uh, again, I just wanted to say that, you know, as a physician who specializes in obesity medicine, I think there's such great medications out there for our patients. So we really have to be able to improve access to these drugs. We have to be able to decrease the costs for these drugs for our patients. And availability, most of the times these drugs are available, maybe this patient is able to get it through the insurance, but they are not in stock. So that will interrupt the obesity treatment. So again, access, cost, and availability, those are areas we really need to work hard at. So now that we've got that cleared up, Mrs. Obama's Let's Move campaign was well-founded after all, and most importantly, had a catchy theme song. If you have more health-related questions, be sure to consult with your doctor. But if you have any TMI questions, you can ask us in the comments. Now let's move our bodies out of here.